How to improve an old methylated spirit burner. I have two Burnack Vulcan steam engines and both of them use small twin wick mess burners. They perform badly as the burners do not provide enough heat and they also need refilling frequently. Here I show simple but effective way to make them work more efficiently and generate a lot more heat. This is the burner that I used in the steam test of the Burnack Vulcan steam engine that I rebuilt. I should really say remade because I built a new boiler for it and rebuilt it completely. But I didn't do anything with the burner up until now. The steam test was disappointing. You will see this burner performing badly later on in the video. The first job was to drill a hole in the centre of the burner to take a mammod funnel. This makes filling it a lot easier. Look at this other burner from my other Burnack Vulcan engine. The hole in the centre is no more than a vent and the funnel won't fit in it. As you can see I drilled a larger hole in the centre of the burner that way to fill it I didn't have to keep removing one of the wicks. In this clip I'm showing all the wick material that I removed from inside the burner. All this wick material or at least cotton wool has to be inside the burner you can't just have a tank full of meths with a flame on top of it as the methylated spirit would just burn and boil over and then you have a problem and it becomes very important to put out the raging inferno all over your bench. Here's a clip from the first steam test. The problem doesn't become apparent until the methylated spirit starts to run out and then the wicks start to burn. It took quite a while to raise steam from cold. I should have used hot water really, but I don't have any hot water in my main workshop. And now if you look at the burner, you will see that the wicks are actually on fire. They're glowing red. This is not good. It's a very old type of wick material, and it's not asbestos, it's just ordinary cotton. The engine continued to run for a while after I removed the burner. And as you can see, the wicks are very badly burnt and very short now. You can also see by the water gauge that the boiler is nearly empty. I had to drain out some water to even get this burner to raise steam. What I'm going to do is replace the type of wick that is in these burners. I'm using a more modern type of wick material which has glass fibre cores. Here you can see them. In this application the glass fibre doesn't burn. But you can't just stick a short piece of wick in the top. This is a bit deceiving. I loosely packed the entire tank with this wick material. If I was to pull the wick out, you would see that each of the wicks is about four inches long, and this is more than adequate to soak up the methylated spirit inside the tank. Filling the burner is far easier now. I'm using a Mamod funnel, and it takes about three funnels full to fill the burner. Here I accidentally overfilled it. A word of caution, if you do this and spill any methylated spirit on the bench, wipe it off immediately before you light the burner. Not only am I wiping the piece of wood that the burner was resting on, I'm wiping the splashes from around the piece of wood. I'm lighting the burner using my small blowtorch. The length of wick protruding from the burner is relative to the amount of heat and the time it takes to evaporate the meths. I found this wick length to be just about right. All I did was splay it out slightly to spread the flame. It's a good time to cover a subject like this because the fuel tablets have now been banned and the gel fuel I am not very thrilled with at all. If I decide to start playing with small steam toys, I'm going to go back to the methylated spirit burners. After all these years, the original Mamod methylated spirit burner still will power all of the Mamod models. I've left the burning methylated spirit burner on screen, and I'm showing one way of fitting new wicks to the other burner from the other Burnack Vulcan. However, I didn't drill the hole in the middle, so I think I'll drill the hole in the middle. Not a good idea. This needs to be done before you fit the wicks. Otherwise, this happens. The twist drill bit grabs the wicks inside the burner and pulls them back through the holes. I showed this clip previously. This is how much wick material is inside the burner. And believe me, extracting it took me about three quarters of an hour. 
using a diamond burr to grab the wick and pull it out, followed by very thin pliers, followed by screwdrivers. It took a long time. With this second burner, all I need to do now is insert two more pieces of new wick that can now be a bit shorter than the wick that I used on the first one, because the tank is already full of wick material. As you can clearly see, the burner is still burning, just as well as it did when I first lit it. Not only is the quality of flame much better, but it's burning for a lot longer time. After a while, I really did get quite fed up of looking at this burner. Time, I think, to blow it out and examine it. As you can see, the wicks are just as good as they were when I fitted them to the burner. You can actually adjust these wicks too if you want a bit more heat. All you do is pull the wicks very slightly further out of the burner and then spread them with a pair of pliers, like I'm doing here. I made this video because I was really surprised how different the performance was just by using a different type of wick material. Here's an extract from the second steam test coming shortly. And as you can see, there's a lot more water in the boiler and it runs beautifully. And that is it for this methylated spirit burner special. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.